architecture defines the face of a city. And who knows the history and secrets of its streets, palaces and cathedrals best? The guide, of course. He will set the route, mood and emotions. This episode of Pro Art is about the iconic buildings of Pechersk and temples of the ancient Podil. So look to the left, look to the right. A word to the guide. Monsieur, look to the left. Seniors, look to the right. Ladies and gentlemen, would you be so kind as to turn back? Ah, very interesting. And if you manage to connect to some device, let's say an iPad, connect to some other pictures and even connect to the Internet, to some museum, then that is fantastic. It's full interactive and very exciting. Architecture is the historical background of any city in the world. But the most important fact is that experienced guide Ina Shkarpova, who is a native of Latvia, came to Ukraine and immediately fell in love with Kyiv, as if it were her native Riga. The excursion changes depending on what you are focusing on. Generally speaking, it is widely believed that architecture is like music that is frozen in time. When we look at the Mariinsky Palace in the Petrus district of Kiev, we imagine those minuets and see other images. In other words, it is truly like frozen music that is very inspiring. So let us try to hear the sounds of the past and the amazing creations made by the human hand. There are many such works of art in Kiev. All you have to do is look around. There is Baroque, Gothic, Neoclassicism, empire and constructivism. Who will help you figure it all out? The tour guide. What matters the most is that you get to know the city better and you begin to appreciate its beauty and fall in love with it. I'm very attracted to history, especially the history of architecture. If I don't get enough information about something, my imagination helps me fill those gaps. It simply needs some impetus to give you inspiration. I learn something new with every excursion. Every guide has some unique feature about them. Pay attention to the fact that this building was built in the middle of the 19th century. The International Center of Culture and Arts, formerly the October Palace and before that the Institute for Noble Maidens, is one of the most iconic objects in the Petrus district of Kiev. It was this building, designed by the famous architect Vikenti Beretti. Fortunately, there are still plenty of structures in Kiev that make your soul freeze and make you look at this creation with great admiration. There were numerous architects in Kiev at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th centuries. Those architects that worked in Kiev created the space in which we live in today. But this space needs to be protected, preserved and not destroyed. This is very important for the history of the capital of Ukraine. Thanks to the preserved architectural creations, contemporaries can enjoy the beauty that surrounds them, as well as reveal the history of a city, a street or a particular building. This is where tour guides become invaluable, as they are the guides to unknown secrets that expose distant unknown worlds for people to discover. Of course, history lies in architecture itself, but sometimes you need to spend some time digging into this antiquity in archives and by conducting various scientific studies. The main objective is to find interesting stories that will illustrate the amazing architectural wonders that we can see right before our very eyes. Live and learn. Tour guides constantly enrich their knowledge of seemingly well-known subjects. The older the history, the greater the delight of the researcher that solves mysteries and puts the pieces of a puzzle into the right place and creates a single picture of the past. It happens all the time. Kyiv is an ancient city, a city with a capital letter, just like Rome, Paris or Constantinople. There are so many layers of history here in this wonderful city that allow one to discover some new and interesting historical facts on every step of the way. At first glance, it seems that the profession of a tour guide is rather dull and offers little room for creativity, but it is directly related to acting. So in addition to erudition, a tour guide also sometimes needs certain acting skills, Ina Shkarpova believes. Undoubtedly, that should be emphasized when training a tour guide. First you accumulate information, then you start writing it down. You write and shorten it, write and shorten it. In the end, you come out in front of your audience, the excursionists, and your performance depends on your acting skills and your ability to control yourself and your voice. I have control over that, of course. I encourage people to communicate, so that I'm not just a talking head that came there to give a monologue. Tours, just like theaters, have their regular visitors. They go on the same excursion 
version several times. That is because they know that there will always be something new in their tour that they did not see the previous time. In other words, they may see something else that they missed the first time. Apparently, that depends on whether or not I am on the same wavelength with them, so to speak. People who have lived in Kyiv all their lives give me great support, which is a big help. They came to the Lipki tour five times. They came up to me after the fifth excursion and said, thank you, I learned a lot of new things from your fascinating tour. That's when I thought, I'm probably not working in vain. The building was designed by the architects Kobelev and Verbitsky. On Institutska street, almost every second building is a work of art of the 19th and 20th centuries. Building number 9 is among such peaks of architectural design concepts. It is revered for its amazingly beautiful facades with Gothic elements, rich stucco molding, wide cornices and decorative pillars supported by sculptures of griffins or guards of gold deposits. The building was two stories high and was especially designated for the country's central bank. The building was equipped with a central steam heating system, electric lighting and a unique ventilation system. The air was drawn from a specially planted flower garden in the courtyard and pleased all of the bank employees with a pleasant natural aroma. This building is well restored and is currently in excellent condition. When those people who take tours of the building and look at the original photographs give a positive response, wow, it hasn't changed a bit since the day it was built. Everything has been restored except for the ventilation system. Historical paradoxes also surrounded this building in Lipke. It was once a manor that belonged to General Dmitry Begichev. Then a palace for general governors was built here. After the revolution, all the authorities ruled here. In the end, the palace was destroyed by the Poles. In his felt in Kyiv city, Bulgakov wrote the following phrase. All Poles are cousins. They blew up everything they could. He also wrote that the time will probably come when the Poles will eventually rebuild it at their own expense. In addition to the fact that the Writers' Union of Ukraine resides here, this is a well-preserved monument of architecture. The mansion is cozy both outside and inside. The thing is that during one of the meetings of the Writers' Union, the ceiling collapsed, several pieces of plaster fell off. Upon further inspection, it turned out that it was a sliding ceiling. Then they found the blueprint in the city archive and found out that its builder, Volodymyr Nikolaev, installed a sliding ceiling upon the order of the owner of the building, Simha Lieberman. The faithful Jew, Simha Lieberman, spent a week in such a room during the holiday of Sukkot, praying under the stars. When we approach a Gothic cathedral, what do we experience? Holy trepidation. And here everything is so small, reduced in size, and there are all these tiny towers, and the color is pink. That's why people call it a gingerbread house, as if it's decorated with fudge. It is adorable. The impression is completely opposite to what people experience when looking at Gothic buildings. This is the mastery of the architect. Nowadays, this neo-Gothic castle, designed by engineer Vishnevsky, is greeted with a kind smile. Even the color gives the impression that it's not serious at all, but rather something merry. These towers and transitions seem to be somewhat of a parody of the Gothic style of architecture. This gingerbread house of Baron X. Kuhl Gildenbond with fallen spires had both a sorrowful and not a merry appearance. Like Professor Prabrzhensky said, Kalabuchov's house has been done for. The same thing happened here in Kiev. It's great when investment companies or state institutions buy a building and seek to rebuild it. In this case, an investment company is taking care of the reconstruction. It completely restored it as it was intended by the architect. So all of the seven spires remain intact, and the original image of this building has been completely restored. As a good example is Pavel Alyoshin, who, among other things, immortalized himself in the form of a cat on two bas reliefs that adorn the upper part of Kovalevsky's building. 
He had a bit of a laugh at the expense of the owner of the building. That is, he left an image of himself, which would constantly look at the owner of the estate from above. In other words, there is the architect and a cat that is looking at the owner of the building from above. Compare yourself, I think it's very similar. One of the most beautiful buildings of the mid-18th century, the noble style of the Klovsky Palace impresses with the elegance of its architectural shapes. There is a grove of linden trees and garden trees that was planted around the building. Those lime alleys led to the banks of the Dnipro River along once very scenic pathways. Oh, it was a huge event for the people of Kiev. More than 2,120 people gathered in the beautiful gardens near the Klovsky Palace. I even remember the exact number of trees. They were cut down upon the order of General Levashov in the 1830s, so the land could be planned and built up. The thing is that in 1831, Tsar Nicholas I ordered to build a new Kiev Petrovsk fortress here. Therefore, General Levashov was given carte blanche. He didn't just cut down the linden trees back then. He also also cut a huge number of poplar trees and replanted many streets. The building was gradually transferred to the Petrovsk Lavra and then to the National Treasury. A magnificent facade, exquisite baroque, luxury and gilding – all of that is about the Mariinsky Palace in Kiev, which was designed by Bartolomeo Francesco Rastrelli. It has undergone many restorations since the 18th century. Visitors wonder whether the famous architect would have liked his work had he been able to see it with his eyes. I think he would have been pleased. The motives used by the architect were also used in the reconstruction of the palace. Now it is a pearl of architecture. I believe that the money that the authorities invested in its reconstruction has not gone to waste. If that much money was invested in the preservation of architecture, that would have been great. But let us not lose hope. For a passionate historian and cultural expert, every nook of their native city is highly valuable. But they all have their most favorite places that they can talk about endlessly. I'm not going to be very original, but all these ancient districts such as Podil, the upper town and Petrovsk are undoubtedly the most prominent sites of attraction in the city during the times of Kiev and Rus. However, in ruthless times, many architectural masterpieces were destroyed, in particular the Church of the Nativity of Christ, which was restored from scratch in the years of independent Ukraine. Back in the 11th century, Prince Volodymyr the Great built the Church of the Nativity of Christ on this spot. It was burned down and then rebuilt a number of times. The last church was built in the period 1809 to 1814, according to the blueprint drafted by Andrei Milensky. The destroyed Church of the Nativity of Christ was revived in 2003. The exact outer appearance of the church, designed by architect Milensky, was preserved. The tour guide noted that, just like many other buildings in the Podil district, the church has all the signs of the Empire style. It is the only church in Kiev, the altar of which is located facing the southeast rather than the east as was traditionally acceptable. Among the dominating buildings in Podil, in terms of architectural style, is also the church of Mykola Nabarezhny. Starting from the 17th century, there was a wooden church here at first, then a stone church. This church was built by Ivan Barsky on the money that he collected from the local residents. A masterpiece of the 17th century, the icon of St. Mykola Mirlikiski represents enormous cultural value. Beautiful murals have been preserved in this church that was built in the 18th to the 19th centuries. In addition to that, there is also the icon of Mykola Mokri. There are also also a large number of icons dedicated to him inside the church itself. The ancient Perahosha Dormition of the Mother of God Church was resurrected from the ashes. This is the only structure, the foundation of which goes deep into the groundwater. Back in the 12th century, the sons of Volodymyr Monomach, Stislav and Yaropol built a temple in the very heart of Podil and decorated its interior with incredibly gracious icons. This church stood on a hill. It was the main community center of Kiev. Kiev. 
Kyiv is a city that is embellished with a diversity of architectural styles. Modern concrete and glass structures are being raised, which look totally discordant standing next to the historical buildings. But a wise and experienced tour guide knows how to develop an excursion route and level off all the time discrepancies. After all, an eternal city was, is and will always be beautiful. It is obvious that Kyiv is a verdant city. The fact is that Kyiv boasts a huge number of parks along the Dnipro River. And thank God that they are being preserved. While touring the city, I suddenly noticed that some building has been suddenly restored. Another building on Shota Rustaveli Street was also recently restored. And of course, I would like all these historical monuments to be preserved and passed on as posterity for our children and grandchildren. I'm delighted with this store and the city Kiev. I love it. I welcome everyone to visit us, look around and be amazed by the wonderful miracles situated on the banks of the Dnipro River.